Yes, we're back with another episode, another rider. Today we have um, Abe. Abe, and he's from India, and he's a professional squash player. Professional squash player. Thank you. <laughs> and so I didn't know. I thought I did. Well, obviously every country plays every sport, but I I've never met. I thought he was a cricket player when you saw his bag. His bag's got a massive bag, but no, he's a squash player. So, how long you been in playing squash for? Uh, I started playing when I was eight years old. Okay. And uh, I went professional when I was 16. So, why squash? Why not cricket or any other? Uh, so, in the building that I used to live at, my neighbor used to play squash. Okay. Uh, so, my mom just made me tag along with him one day and then that's kind of where it all began. Okay. Have you got lots of siblings? I have one elder brother. Ah, oh, so, you, so your mum thought, you go and play with him. Uh, <laughs> so get out of the kitchen kind yeah. of thing. Well, uh, he was into other sports like basketball and football. Okay. Uh, squash is kind of, you know, new to anyone in my family, so. Alright. Is squash quite popular in India? Um, it is getting quite popular. Uh, it's popular around, um, it's more popular around the time when we have these uh, major sporting events. But, uh, you know, otherwise it's uh, kind of a quiet sport. Oh, okay. Yeah, because it's, a, it's not a team sport at all, is it? No, it's not. It's just you two. Okay. So you've been playing since you're eight years old. Yeah. What's the journey been like? Like, what what was the first racket you had? Was it a slash, slash and jab? What was it? Uh, I think the first one would Speed have camera been reported ahead. A, a Dunlop racket. Oh, Dunlop. I think, yes. And then, uh, after, like, I have my uncle who lives in London. Uh, and he would bring Dunlop rackets from the UK back to India every time he, he would come. Okay. Uh, but now I'm sponsored by Head. Okay. So, and I've been with them for eight years now. So, so I didn't know Head was still around. Yeah. <laughs> I used to have that bag. Yeah. It was a black, shiny bag of gold writing. Do they still do I, that bag? No, but I, I know the bag you're talking about. <laughs> and like 25, 30 years ago. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. So. What's your what's a typical day like for you in your training regime? So wake up, uh, so back at home, which is in India. Uh, what part up, of India? I'm um, in the south of India, in Chennai. Chennai, in okay. Uh, so I'd wake up around 6 a.m. Uh, I would spend some time with my dog, have a coffee, get ready for the morning. Uh, after training at eight, start at about nine. Uh, done with that around eleven. Home at half 11, uh, chill out, get some physiotherapy done, have lunch, and then back to the gym in the evening, come back, same thing again, get some dinner, and off to bed. So it's like, what, do you do like four hours a day in total training? Uh, so the training part would be four hours, but then there would be, you know, extra like mobility sessions or stretching. Uh, sometimes you'll see the physio to get a massage, so that could take up more of your day. So it's a full-on day then? Yes, it is. Okay, so what kind of... Right, obviously you're hitting the ball yeah. with the racket and all that. Yeah. Um, what other exercises do you do? Do you swim? Do you... Um, uh, I bike a lot. Is it? Yeah, because it's uh, it's good because it takes the impact away from your knees because squash is oh, kind yeah. of an impact sport. Yeah, because you suddenly yeah. stop and you yeah. boom! Uh, off late I've started running a little bit more uh, and then obviously we do a lot of plyometrics and a lot of uh, lifting in the gym. Mm. Okay, is it, do you lift light and, 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 a, and, a, and many reps? Yeah, it's more explosive stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's not too heavy. Yeah. But yeah. Okay, that's interesting. <laughs> now, can I ask, how old are you? I'm 25. Okay, so you're not really at that point where you're getting injuries? Touchwood, <laughs> no. Okay. Yeah. So, so how long you, you've been doing it for some time? Yeah. What's a, a career span like for an average um, cricket um, squash, squash player? player sorry. How uh, I think it honestly comes down to how well you take care of your body. I think in your early years, okay. I think just the finer details. Uh, so I'd say anywhere from well, doesn't matter when you start, but I know a lot of good players who are in their you know mid 30s and are still uh, at their peak physicality so I'd say around that stage is where uh, you know you'd probably want to end 
Okay, okay, yeah. Maybe mid mid thirties, thirty five ish. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's good. Is there any? What would you say it takes to become a very good squash player? Um, I, it's just the same, I think, with any other sport. I think uh, uh, you need to have a good team around you, supporting you, uh, a set goal uh, on what you want to achieve, and uh, a lot of discipline, and make a lot of sacrifices. Ah, oh. so all right, how there's two points to that. Yeah. Discipline and sacrifices. Yeah. What kind of sacrifices have you made? Um, and what's and what how and what are the disciplines? Sacrifices can be uh, you know a lot of things. Like I spend a lot of time away from home, so I don't have that comfort of being at home all the time. Uh, I'm technically living out of a suitcase. Uh, I don't sleep in the same bed for more than a week. Uh, when I was a bit younger, you don't go. You can't do late nights. You can't. Go out to a lot of parties with your friends. It's it's a different lifestyle, and I feel like that is the sacrifices you make. But how consistent you are with them then comes down to how disciplined you are. Fair enough. I suppose you want the dream, you pay the price. Yep. So that's interesting because how do you manage to keep that? I know the key word here is mental health. Yeah. How do you manage to keep those friends yeah. that you barely get to see? And yeah. I assume you're traveling the world. Yeah. Uh, but I'd say it's important to understand that these friends would be your friends regardless of what your commitments are like and that, those are actually the kind of friends I have. It's very rare for me now to make new friends but the friends that I do have now are friends I've known pretty much for 10 years or more mm-hmm. uh, and you know they obviously have been very understanding of my career and vice versa so you know that works out. And I suppose as success comes you don't really want to bring in more people. Um, in your circle, you want to have a tight circle of people who are genuinely for you. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I think the people who have, uh, you know, who stand out are the ones who are who don't really switch up on you when you're not doing too well. Who stay? Who don't? Because around my friends, uh, I'm just a very normal guy, and mm-hmm. we don't have this whole equation of who's doing what. When we're together, it's just more mm. of the vibes. What do they? What do your friends do? Are they just like doctors, accountants, yeah. IT yeah. people, or are they in uh, sports as well? Some of them are still studying. Some of them have jobs. Some of them are, uh, you know, with their family businesses. Uh, so they're a lot of them doing a lot of things. Uh, a lot of my friends have actually left my hometown, mm. and uh, I have a very good friend in London. I have two of them back home. Mm. Uh, one of them in the United States. So. Mm-hmm. You spoke about traveling. Yeah. Why do you have to travel so often? Because it's every, it's like a week in one location. That's, yeah. that's right. Yeah. So our off season, just to give you a small breakdown, is about three months of the year, which is over the summer. And then in nine months, you're technically having to play around 16 to 20 tournaments. And these tournaments take place all over the world. So it's sort of playing two tournaments a month. And so yeah, that takes up a lot of traveling. Mm. Uh, also, I am based up in Scotland, so my coach is from Edinburgh, so I'm there quite a lot, as much as I can be during the season, so that's all the travelling that I was talking about. So, so that must... Edinburgh is not warm. Yeah, <laughs> so it's that, not. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, cool. so that's a culture shock for you in sense of weather. Yeah, but uh, I was in a small town called Pontefract up in the north of England for about two and a half years uh, after I turned 19 mm-hmm. and so I'm used to you know being in the UK when it's cold and but yeah when I went to Edinburgh for the first time I was pretty shocked at how cold mm-hmm. it could get. Well but the dialect do, do you understand it because some of them speak very strong. It took some time but now I'm I think I'm a pro now. Yeah. Yes, I found when I was in the military yeah. and we had Scottish, we got a regiment called 4-5 okay. and they're based up in Scotland and yeah. you have to, uh, your ears will tune in to the way they speak okay. after a period of time. Yeah. Um, and I find that with m- many different cultures who may speak English, in, in, um, but it's in a different form, let's say. Yeah. So what have you learnt about this industry that you wish you knew when you started? Uh, So for the first few years of my pro career, I was based back in India. Uh, I think a lot of, uh, there's a lot of expertise in the UK uh, in terms of what former players bring. 
uh, to the table and I think that's the only thing that is probably the, the gap in the Indian squash scenario right now is that England and even Scotland uh, has a lot of ex-players and a lot of experience, a lot of uh, uh, knowledge mm -hmm. and I think that was, you know, if I had probably gained some of that knowledge early on in my career maybe, uh, you know, things would be a little more different. So you're on a national team? Yes. Is there many of you on the national team? So the national team is usually four, four men, four women mm -hmm. at major sporting events, but that can sometimes differ from event to event. But uh, usually the big events is around four men and four women. Yeah. I want you to consider something. Okay. Not you. Let's. I'm talking to the audience here. <laughs> okay. There's one point. Was it one point five or one point four billion people? Yes. In India. Yes. And he, this man here. Is on the national team, which only consists of four. So, of all those people, <laughs> this man has managed to rise to the top. <laughs> that's, that's impressive. Thank you. You think about it. You think about it. Yeah, that's a very impressive, man. You, yeah, you deserve a pat on the back, man. <laughs> Jesus, man. No, that just kind of rolled into yeah. my head. Okay, so as a Nash, as a team, yeah. you, you all, I take it you. you because only one person can win, one man, yeah. one woman. Yeah. But you work as a team, or how does it have to go? So sometimes we also have team events, which okay. uh, well you do still play individually, but it's three men from one country against three men from the other country, and it's whichever country has two winners. Mm -hmm. So that's a team event, and of course then you have your individual events, and then sometimes you might have doubles or mixed doubles and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm, I'm with you. So, motivation, Yeah. how do you motivate yourself? Uh, I think it's just inbuilt. I think as you do well, you keep setting new goals for yourself. And I think mm. uh, I think that comes naturally. Sorry. It's okay. Uh, with being an athlete, just that motivation. But I've never really struggled to find that motivation. I don't think I've reached the point where I've lost that motivation. I'm hungry because mm -hmm. uh, I'm also young. I haven't achieved as much as I would like to mm -hmm. yet. So, yeah. So, because you're, you're, like you said, you're young, but the fact that you haven't lost that motivation means you really love what you do. Yes, I do. Because yeah. you're not a small guy. Yeah. Your loins are long. Yeah. And think, are most um, squash players like that long loins? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Most, uh, I mean, but actually, when you look at squash, uh, I think it's one sport where even the top of the sport has guys that have just different body types. Mm. Some of them are long, some of them not very, some of them are chubby, mm. some of them are absolutely ripped. So uh, I think it. Some are chubby? Yeah. If you're training eight, four hours, eight hours a day, how can you be chubby? <laughs> I'm not taking names, but yeah, a few of them can be chubby. Okay, okay, yeah. We will move on from that. Yeah. Has, have you met? The Indian, is it Prime Minister or President? Yes, the Prime Minister. You've met, so, you've met uh, actually, last year I'd come to Birmingham for the Commonwealth Games, which yeah. was in the UK, of course. And post that, he, in, he had invited all the athletes to his house. Okay. So we got to meet him at his uh, residence uh, yeah, back in New Delhi. And what was that like? Uh, it was a very, I think, more for my family as well it was quite a proud moment oh you know, so your just, family turned up as well uh, no it was just for the athletes oh, but just, your like, dad's for, talking about it in the uh, pub isn't yeah. it hey, my boy. <laughs> in, the, in the group chats yeah it, <laughs> he was alive he said make sure your phone's charged i want it live <laughs> but, uh, you know it's nice to be uh, recognized for something you've yeah. put a lot of work into by and uh, our Prime Minister is so great in that aspect. He's very supportive of athletes. Mm. Uh, and yeah. yeah, it's a positive light for the country, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah. So that being said, your face has been, you've been in the media before. Yeah. So have you got a missus? No, I am very much single. <laughs> Why is that? Because you're traveling or uh, family yeah. or? Yeah, I think it just comes down to me being too committed to what I'm doing. I don't think right now there's any space for someone like that in my life because it would just I would just not be it would be unfair to you know now we see why you're 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 the number you're in the number 14 yeah. in the in the, <laughs> no, no it makes sense because yeah. you 
you look at something very logically and you just said it's not going to work because they're demanding. No, it's not that they're demanding. It's just that... You right don't think now, they're demanding? I'll tell you something. Yeah, <laughs> and, and I'm not trying to make it seem like I'm too busy or I'm too... But, uh, you know? But it, it's just that right now the priorities are somewhere else. And mm -hmm. if there is someone who comes along who understands what it takes to do what I do, then maybe it'll work out. Okay, because I would say, yeah, yeah, I hear, I hear what you're saying. There, it, there is, if you're teaming up with anybody as in a relationship, there's always going to be a demand yes. of time, yes. and if that's going to take away from your intense day of training yeah. and travelling, yeah. they're going to say, "Well, can't I come with you? I've never been to Scotland before." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, but it's not that kind of holiday, <laughs> yeah, and stuff like that. Do you, Tyson said he's watched more videos yeah. about boxing yeah. than he has actually trained yeah. in boxing because um, obviously strategy and things, obviously boxing is combative so it's yeah. slightly different. Do you have to watch a lot of videos in your uh, industry? Uh, yeah, I think the more you watch the more beneficial uh, it is. Uh, I do like watching a few players who I am mm. inspired by, who I look up to. If you could train with anybody in the world, yeah. who would that be and why? Would that be like a current, uh, uh, yeah, current yeah, player or yeah, past player? Past or, either. Uh, right, this is a tough one. Uh, probably be uh, well, this Egyptian player called Amar Shabana okay. from Egypt. Uh, of course, uh, he was uh, he's a former world number one and I think his racket skill was just you know, from another planet. Uh, so if I had the chance to hit to them, mm -hmm. then that would be someone I'd train. Have you been to Egypt? I have, yes. Because I, I was watching a documentary, that's why I asked you yeah. if you're Egyptian, because yeah. they're really dedicated on they, squash for some are, reason. Yes. And like, they have that massive academy of just <laughs> rooms and rooms. Get in the room, hit the ball, hit the ball, hit the ball. Yeah, <laughs> that kind of thing. What was that like, being uh, there? Because that's real dedication. Yeah, so I went there for a summer camp in 20, 2017 I think or 18 uh, 2017 uh, and you know it's just it's a very different culture as to how they look at squash uh, it's very serious I don't think there's any messing about it when you're kids like I feel like in other countries as kids it's more probably a hobby or an activity to get you fit mm -hmm. but in Egypt it's straight down to business you know uh, and that's why you see so many world champions from young mm -hmm. coming out of Egypt and all the talent it's funny because the sports, the countries and the sports where that attitude is taken, they do really well. Yeah. If you look at, I don't know if you're into wrestling, yeah. where you've got those East Uzbekistan and all those countries there. Yeah. They are very serious with their wrestling. Yeah. Americans are serious with their American football. Yeah. Um, Jamaicans, where my family's from, are serious about their running. Yeah. And so you produce the best when you take it seriously. So yeah. that shows something. Would you want your son or daughter to yeah. be uh, an athlete and live your life? Uh, I think just deciding for them to be an athlete, maybe not, I don't know. That would probably depend on them. But I honestly want them to live a very athletic lifestyle in terms of keeping uh, you know, their body fit physically, mentally as well. And, you know, just diet and mm -hmm. I think having this sort of lifestyle is mm -hmm. uh, it's just better in the long run. That's interesting you mentioned that because yeah. when we talk about diet, yeah. obviously Asian stereotypical yeah. diet, lots of curries, oils, yeah. Yeah. things like that. Yeah. Are you allowed to eat those kind of foods? What do you eat? Uh, so on 95% of my diet is quite clean, uh, lean meats, uh, stuff like that, uh, you know, carbs to help myself perform while I'm training and uh, it's a quite it's quite I'd say it's quite a good and clean very simple diet it's not very uh, complicated in any sense um, in terms of food I used to be a chubby kid because there is a lot of uh, there's not a lot of knowledge around food and nutrition back home in India uh, I think that's a gap that can really be filled not just sports nutrition but just even general the knowledge around nutrition is quite bad um, so you know that can really I think that's something that could really develop mm. back home it's interesting you say that because obviously Indians India 
as a culture, you're known for very intelligent doctors, and yeah. accountants, lawyers, all those kind of things. Yeah. You've never been known as like the physical yeah. um, race of yeah. people. Yeah. Uh, would you say that's changing now? Um, in in that aspect, maybe not. I think we have a lot of uh, uh, you know athletes rec getting re recognized for their work now. Mm -hmm. So I think it's more based on the individual. I don't think. I honestly, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't see anyone looking at India and going like, oh, you know, uh, people that are so fit or, you know, the culture mm -hmm. behind sport or nutrition mm -hmm. is getting bigger and bigger. I think mm -hmm. you hear a lot about that in the UK and especially the US, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, certainly not India. Yeah, I suppose for here, people yeah. just, so I was out of the country for quite some time and then when I came back there's like just gyms everywhere. Yeah. There's these small gyms, big yeah. gyms, yeah. medium gyms. And I just looked at it that people are aware of their health more now yeah. and what makes them work. Uh, I think that could also be down to COVID. I think that shifted mentality in a lot. This of, this was before yeah. COVID. Yeah, this yeah. was even this before was, COVID. This was, yeah. yeah. But I do hear what you're saying yeah. on, on that. Yeah, how's um, India been since COVID now? Has there been a shift in it? Uh, India's actually booming now. I mean, it depends on which, uh, you know, department or sort of you're looking at. But, uh, you know, financially, India is doing absolutely great. Mm -hmm. uh, I think lifestyle-wise, cities are really developing. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I love... I mean, a lot of people ask me if I, you know, want to live anywhere else because I travel the world and I say no. Uh, in India's the place. India's the place for yeah, you. Yeah. Okay, that's good. And what's it? What's the deal with the sponsorship? Because I'm looking yeah. at the head. I'm yeah. not seeing any yeah. head head so, clothing on you. Uh, not trying to get no. you in trouble. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Oh no, there's head. There's head. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, I'm not really on top. So as soon as the camera time, comes on. It's not tournament time or it's not, you know, I'm not in training, so... Okay, do I need yeah. to put a head logo on this video? No, no, <laughs> you don't have to. Uh, I'm sure they'd love it if you did. <laughs> but no. So, I mean, I, I like... Uh, use all of their stuff while I'm training. Rackets, bags, and all of their shoes and stuff. But right now, I'm just kind of... Sea head, yeah. what country does that orientate, orientate uh, from? Uh, so, the headquarters is based in Austria. Okay. But, of course, you recognize... I mean, you know, head from some big tennis athletes like yeah. Novak Djokovic, yeah. uh, Maria Sharapova. So it's an Austrian yeah. com company then? I think so, yes. Okay, no, it's just that you yeah. said you're based in Scotland, so yeah. I was thinking maybe the yeah. yeah, like, head was a Scottish company. So initially it was the, the head, the contingent from India that sponsored me. And then as I got a little up in the rankings, the international team mm -hmm. decided to take that over. Okay, yeah. that's good. That's good. Well, it's been an interesting journey. Yeah. It's been a great interview. Thank you. Very insightful. What would you words of wisdom be yeah. to a young person in India yeah. who wants to follow in your footsteps? Okay. Uh, have fun, which is very important. Uh, set goals for yourself, which is also very important. Stay disciplined towards what you've set out to achieve, and I don't think there's anything that you know you can't work and get if you work hard enough. Okay, okay. And should they do they need to buy go out and buy any special racket? Because you said you used to get rackets from England. Yeah. Surely they sell rackets in India now. Uh, no, but if you want to really, they. I mean, of course they do sell rackets all over the world. But what I was trying to say is that if you want to be the best squash player, then I think you just have to use head. Just use head. <laughs> okay, a bit of promotion thrown in there. That would upset the agent or the board of manager. <laughs> okay, well, thanks a lot. And where can people find you on social media? Sorry, I forgot to ask so, you that. Instagram is uh, what I'm usually on the most, and Twitter. Uh, so it's at the rate. Which is A B H A Y S I N G H K ninety eight. So if you say that again, because the sound kicked in. Okay, so it's Abhay Singh K ninety eight. A B H A Y S I N G H K ninety eight on all social media platforms. All social media, and they will see you. Well, thanks a lot for that, and we wish you well. Thank you so much. We hope that episode enhanced your life. 
We post an interview every day as well as vlogging on our social media channel. Don't forget to subscribe to get our latest episode.